All right, hello, boys and girls. This is Mike Kelly, Animators Forum and Real Illusion Forum. You can always find me on Real Illusion Forum. And, of course, you can write to me at Mike at Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y, town.com. Mike at kellytown.com. And feel free to write me with any question related to uh, 3D or if you have any uh, uh, requests or... Um, if you have any winning lotto numbers, I'll take those as well. <laughs> anyway, I always glad to talk with people. If you don't hear back from me the same day you write, the, the odds are high that your email went into my spam folder. So make sure uh, if you don't if you don't hear from me, write me again. And we'll, but I like check my spam usually. So anyway, this is a version. I'm using version one point one two, I believe now. The versions will keep changing as I as I capture bugs. I'm finding bugs all the time. I'm running a ton of environments and props and sets through this in an effort to try to nail everything down. Uh, but you can help if you if you run something and something doesn't work or you don't get the maps you think you should. Um, you know, let me know. Uh, so anyway, I'm, this is going to try to be an explanation fully of how to use my script and how to install it and do all of that stuff. So let's. Let's see if we can gather everything we need to do and dot the I's and cross the T's. The idea for the script is that you take a set or a prop or a vehicle or a non-Genesis avatar, just anything in Daz other than a Genesis avatar in the clothing. The best way to get those in is still using CC3 Transformer for a number of other reasons I don't want to go into here. Um, but you, you take your, all of those things from Daz, you export them as an FBX, and then you bring them into iClone and run my script, uh, pointing it towards the original Daz file. So you always need to know the Daz file that you're, that you're getting from. So for example, if I was going to use this, the docs, you notice if I just leave, I have to leave it over here. It takes a while before the pop-up comes up. Uh, I'm using OBS as a system. Hopefully you can see the pop-up there. And the pop-up shows the file path, or it's located in this particular case, Daz content, props, the docs, okay? So you can see where that Daz file is. You've got to know where the Daz file is for my routine to work. So first things first, how do you install my script? You can put the script anywhere you want. That doesn't matter. But you have to put the dazconfig.cfg, dazconfig.cfg. This file has to go into your documents directory. I've tried to write it so that if you don't have this file, it will create this file for you, but it's still not going to know your, your setup that you need to have. So you really need to have this and edit it and put your, your own items in here. You'll notice a couple of things. Uh, it asks you where your DAS content directory is, and you can find that the same way you found where the DAS duff is. You can just hover your script over it. If you can see, in this particular case, if it comes up, I, again, it's kind of weird on OBS, but... Uh, the file path says g colon forward slash daz content. So that's where my daz content directory is located. So if you look at that, that's where it is. G colon forward slash daz content. Yeah, forward slashes, I would prefer you to use. Um, in Windows, we're, we're kind of slash independent. We don't care whether they're forward or backward, but it, it, it's a little better if we can be consistent about that. Also, do not put a trailing forward slash at the end of any of these things. Same for the start directory. Uh, this is where it's going to normally start. Uh, so um, you, you would normally want it in your content directory. The reason we have this is that this will uh, move around and save you. If you have to run the script again, it will go right back to where you were the last time, so you don't have to try to search for that. Uh, again, no forward slashes at the end. Compression, true or false, whether it compresses the textures down to 1K, I'm actually thinking about just removing this and always compressing um, because even on my machine with 24 gigabyte in my uh, NVIDIA graphics card, and I have 128 gig on my CPU, but uh, one of these 4K maps, if you load in 100 of those maps, you'll blow out your system. So I may just take that out. Uh, and then out, out directory is where we put temporary files, where we're going to write temporary files to. So um, you have to have some place there. And again, this is for me, but you're going to put where you want. So, so you have to have this stuff, okay? So make sure you have your DAS config in your in, uh, in documents directory, whatever your documents directory is. Now, 
you also should, really should install Pillow. And I've talked about this over and over again. I even have a video on how to install third-party libraries in iClone Python. I'm not going to go into that again. I've already done that once. I'll, in the README file, there's a README file with every time you get a compressed one of these. And like I said, I'm going to keep putting new ones out. Uh, I will send those out to those of you that I have your email addresses for. For the rest of you, you can always find the latest one on this video. I'll try to keep updating this uh, particular um, link to the latest uh, one. And they can get released as recently as every day or, or maybe not for a week or two. If you have a problem, the first thing to do is see if there's a better version, a newer version for you that might work for you. Anyway, in the readme file, it, talk, it has a link to the, uh, the YouTube on how to install uh, Pillow. So you, you really need to get Pillow installed. It isn't that difficult, but there's some things you need to be careful about in terms of installing it. The most important thing is make sure you run command prompt as admin. you got to run command prompt as admin or you're going to screw things up. Okay. So anyway, so that's all that. So uh, we'll close that. So here, I'm gonna just go through this. Uh, some of these I've gone through again, but I wanna talk about a few other things. So this is a file that I've loaded in. This is the, the Oasis. And I'm going to go ahead and export it. Again, export. Uh, I've already done this, so I'm gonna, but I'm gonna do it again. So export, yes. So here's the settings we wanna use to export, okay? So uh, you could turn on no hidden or not. This isn't necessarily, sometimes it's, it's. Uh, I like to hide things and then not export them, but you can uncheck this if you want, it doesn't matter. But we want figures, props checked, we want locks, morphs, we want to embed the textures, we want to merge the clothing. Some of these things are more important for uh, Transformer into CC3 than they are for my system, but this shows you the basics. And of course you always want FBX 2012, the binary version, okay? So we say yes, that's all we want, and it exports all that, takes care of all that. Now, in uh, I should mention too, I think you have to own 3DX uh, in order for you to be able to drag and drop into iClone. I, I don't know, because I own 3DX, so I don't know if you try to drag and drop into iClone if it doesn't work if you don't have 3DX, so uh, you guys can tell me. But um, anyway, once you, when, if you have 3DX, you can just take this file, and then drag and drop it, it's the FBX in the iClone. And then as I say, about half of the time, it's going to ask you if you wanna break up the mesh into sub meshes. I always recommend that you do that initially. You might not wanna keep them, everything as sub meshes. You can go ahead and consolidate later and it's really easy to do. But to begin with, I think it's a good idea to break them up. The reason that it makes it better for me is that you, you might have a certain mesh you wanna move, like let's say you have a chair somewhere you wanna move. You might have uh, something you wanna delete out of there. It's just a lot easier to deal with if you have it broken up into separate meshes. Not everything will give you that option though. Okay, so here's uh, the system. You can already see the opacity maps aren't good. They didn't come in correctly, but our system will will, will take care of that. And, uh, and there's the tent and all that kind of stuff. I'm showing you from a different angle because I've never, I've done this one a lot, so I thought I would just show you a little different angle here. Okay, now. If you want to just do everything that's in this file, you'll notice that there's all these uh, sub items here for Oasis Sunset. We don't have to do anything else if we just want to do everything. We just have this selected and we can go over to, I always recommend that you have the council log up and running. If you don't have it as a tab here, you can go up here to the script and put the council log and it'll come back up for you. But I always recommend you do that. That way we can see error messages and we can also see how it's going. And then we run our script and then it's going to ask you, where is that dad's file? And you notice I've already done this, so it knows that we're right back to where we were. But if you didn't, you'd have to find out, you know, where your directory is and, and locate it. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll bypass that. So it's going to go off and do that. In this particular case, it's going to take just about a minute, I think. It used to take seven or eight minutes. I've uh, optimized the routines a lot. If, on your, if you have a decent machine, it shouldn't take more than 15 or 20 minutes to do almost any set. Uh, I would let most things run, if they're not coming up, I would let it run at a maximum of an hour. After an hour, if it's not working, just cancel everything out, crash, crash it out. You can, if you click on iClone enough, you can get it to stop. And then write back to me and tell me what set you were using, and I'll check it out and see if it's a problem. There are still some sets that cause some problems, so... Uh, but as a general rule, 
this shouldn't take very long on, on most sets. Uh, matter of fact, we don't need Dez anymore, do we? No, we don't need Dez anymore. So, um, so we'll do that. So anyway, so you, and you can watch. It always gives you the starting time, and then it'll come back and tell you how long it took. And like I said in the past, this took seven or eight minutes. I think with my optimized routines now, it probably won't take more than a... Yep, there we go. It probably takes... Uh, so it started at about 41 and finished at 42. A little over a minute there. Okay. And you can see it got the opacity maps and fixed those. And I've, I've shown in another demo about how, even though this has water here, that we can put the iCloud water in, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. So uh, if you want to see that again, go look back at the other demo. So... Uh, so it got all the maps. Now, you notice it got all the maps, even though we didn't split those objects out separately. But what if you only wanted a map, let's say, on, uh, let's say, just this little this little thing here, whatever this Genie Aladdin lamp or something is. Uh, if you wanted this and you tried to run the script now with just this selected, we go in here, load the Python, and try to run the script, and the same thing, the sunset. Whoops. It, uh, it went away because it always goes away. And notice it finished without writing any maps. Did zero, okay? Why did it do that? Well, that's because, unfortunately, the way subprops were, because it's it's a subprop of this, you can't actually run my script on subprops. Uh, some people have actually complained in, in the forum about that, and I agree. We should get that to, to where it works, but we can't do that. So in order to get um, to do it on subprops, you have to select those subprops and then go and detach them, okay? So now they're detached, and you can see if we close down Oasis Sunset, there's still those separate props to attach. So now I can go ahead and select that one separately. And I can even select the table. So I got a lot of tables over there. Uh, but whatever. So now I can select a couple of these, go into the council log, and actually uh, run it, run that script. And, uh, and again, it's, it's going back to Blender because it always, it always dumps out of whatever it was running when it... Uh, and there we go. And it wrote nine maps, and so it did those things. So, uh, so that's how you can select items separately if there's a, a particular item you're just trying to do. Okay, the one last thing I want to talk about here, uh, even though it's not quite to do with my script, but it is a little bit. Uh, somebody was complaining online. They were going, you know, Mike, I, uh, I brought in this, uh, this set from somebody, and there were items miss all over the place. They were just all over the place. I've talked about this on another video. I've talked about uh, some possible solutions to it. Unfortunately, there really aren't. Uh, the solution I used to use was to write it out to Collada from Dad and then bring it into Blender and then write it out from Blender as, uh, as an FBX. And you can do that still. And it will keep all the, all the objects in the right place. The only problem with that is then my routine here to get the textures won't work. And I don't know how I can make it work. So. Here's what we can do. This is the best way I can think. So you can see the sofa is floating out here, and these pictures are, are not should be attached to the wall. And, and there's another, there's a couple other items here, another sofa there. But I just want to show you what I do, whether this makes sense to you or not. And I should tell you that I, I kind of hate Blender. I, I don't know, hates the right word. A lot of people love it, but it just, for me, it just isn't uh, something that works. But uh, it's a Swiss Army knife. It's something that I don't know that anybody that does 3D can be without. It's free. You might as well download it. So what I do is I, I download the FBX into Blender. As long as we download the FBX into Blender and export it as an FBX, then my routines will still work on it. So uh, so here, for example, you can see we got these. Uh, you can tell how bad I am in Blender because I and I know there's, there's hot keys to move things around, but I never know how to do that. So... Uh, these particular paintings, you know, need to go back to the wall. So I'm hitting the G key, and then I move them back to, uh, you know, wherever they should go. I think I think there is probably good enough. Uh, maybe move them over a little bit. But uh, so so basically, what I'm saying is, I just kind of whoops and see. That's why Blender kind of drives me nuts. I'm sure those of you that know Blender better are going, you know, Mike, you could just do this and snap it. And yeah, I know. Well. If I, if I knew Blender that well, I would, but uh, I'm not much of a Blender guy. Okay, so there. And then the same thing for, I'm not going to do a lot of this, but the same thing for the sofa. You'd move the sofa here. And uh, again, not the Blender guy that you really, <laughs> these are not the robots you want. I'm not the uh, the person to teach Blender by any means. Uh, I think that, I think what you want to do is put it in the right viewport, and then, you know, uh, that then it'll move a lot better, but... Uh, 
I'm just kind of clumsy with this. But in any case, that's what I do. You know, I just kind of, kind of move stuff around till it looks decent. I'm not going to move all the rest of it. And then you go in and you export it. And if you use the regular uh, FBX export settings for Blender, uh, this is just the standard exports. Uh, it works really well. And uh, so we go in here, we'll call it Blender Office or Blender Bar, I guess is what it is, and export that. And then it takes a while to do its thing. I, I don't even know whether there's a, uh, I don't see a progress bar on this anywhere either. Blender is just weird for me. I know some people that absolutely love it. And I, again, I couldn't live without it, but I hate the interface. I just, I feel like I'm clumsy. I tried Blender Sensei and uh, that was a little better, but still it's really awkward for me. So are we done yet? <laughs> We're th thinking about it. Yeah, Blender Steam. Oh, you also might notice too, we can uh, see there's bones in here. This set is actually rigged to some degrees. The door is rigged. And, and we can see that in iClone, you can actually um, uh, do things in iClone with that. So here's the, the old set, the one that did work. By the way, one thing I should mention too, I'm talking about a minute, I know. Whenever you bring a thing in, uh, like a set, like a dad set, you should always zero it out. See how this is not set up properly? Zero it out. And the reason you want to do that is that that way your cameras and your you know your other stuff that you're doing will all fit better, uh, and and then when you bring in other things they'll also fit as long as everything's zeroed out. So so make sure you zero out stuff. Okay, so blender bar. So I'm going to bring the blender bar in here just to show. We're going to lay it right on top of this, so you can see the two things that I moved, which are the paintings and the sofa, and they will come in here in just a moment. And it's a big, it's very detailed. It's very detailed. So this is by Polish. And I love the stuff he does, except he has something. And again, see, so we want to zero it out. Zeroes out right on top of that one. So now you can see, you know, the paintings on the wall that I moved are now correct now. And the same for that sofa. So if we go to the scene and we get rid of the first one, we, just, we can do this. So you can see there's the things that didn't work. And there's the things that do work. Okay. So, um, so we get rid of that. And... Uh, then we select the blender bar, and then you can still on the blender bar you can run my routine, and it'll uh, it'll find the uh, the stuff. Except I'm not, I'm, not, I'm trying to think about where I actually put it. Uh, downloads? No, I don't know where I. Put, oh wait, 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 wait! I know, I know. Hang on, hang on. Let me go back. Remember I told you about um, uh, you know how how to know where your dad's content is. Well, again, you need to know your where your stuff is. So in this particular case, it's architecture, and I think it's Polish, or Polish. I'm not sure how he pronounces his name. Uh, there he is, Polish. And it's the uh, mafia stuff. Mafia private bar, there we go. And scenes, and there it is. Okay, so anyway, um, this will take a minute or two to run, but, but I just wanted to demonstrate to you that it does run indeed even after you take it to Blender and manipulate it, as long as you keep it in FBX and as long as you don't, uh, as long as you save it out using the default settings, you can do all that stuff. So you could, uh, you might say, Mike, well, what, how about if I just bring it in first and get all the textures and then move it over as FBX to Blender? No. If you do that, you're going to lose the textures. One of the reasons we do this is, the reason I wrote this script is, FBX doesn't preserve textures. The only thing FBX does is it preserves the diffuse textures. Some opacity textures are preserved with FBX, uh, but by and large, FBX is kind of a crummy format for uh, for doing things. So you can see, so I brought in brought in textures. So if we go, you know, to the uh, modify, you'll see all these nice, beautiful textures that it has. Well, it has uh, yeah. See, there's so there's textures for lots of stuff that I brought in for for things and. So anyway, hopefully this helps. Um, if you have any questions or if you, um, I, as I said, questions, answers, requests, winning lotto numbers, uh, write to me at my email, see me on the forums, write in the comment section. Uh, hopefully this is as useful to you as it is to me. This, this, I've been using this now for the last couple of weeks and it has been a lifesaver. I mean, I, I know in this particular setup, there were only 73 maps because I took a lot of stuff out of here. But when, when the full thing is here, there's about, I don't know, about a thousand maps. Doing a thousand maps by hand, it would take me like a couple of days. So uh, this is far easier than that. 
All right, so uh, we will see you guys on the forum.